Remain seated for the invocation. We thank thee, our Father, for thy mercies, for the blessings with which thou hast endowed us and our world. We pray that thou wouldst help us to use it to thy honor and glory, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, since we have a very important program, indeed the climactic event of the symposium before us, I think you will want me to proceed as rapidly as possible so that we may um, adjourn to Alumni Hall for that final panel. It would not be amiss, I think, at uh, this occasion to call attention to a paragraph out of the brochure which is on your table and which is taken from the inscription in the Nobel Memorial Hall of Science. The paragraph reads as follows. Gustavus Adolphus College finds its own interests reflected in Nobel's desire to encourage and promote scientific investigation, literary excellence, and responsible citizenship in a world community. It shares Nobel's conviction that each has its, per has its particular and important contribution to make to the well-being of mankind. It believes that the study of the sciences contributes greatly to liberal education and that such study is in turn enriched by its association with the study of all aspects of human culture. I think perhaps that says as briefly and as clearly as I can say it, the purpose of this symposium and the general ideal and idea which lies behind the Nobel Association. I would like also to call to your attention on um, your desks uh, or on your, by your places another folder which indicates that the Nobel Symposium is not the only academic event of this winter term. This is the announcement of the 16th Annual Bernadotte Institute on World Affairs under the theme South Asia in Transition. This begins on Monday and runs uh, not regularly but on at various times throughout next week and the beginning days of the week following. Both of these events are indications of the fruitfulness of an association that is historical but which is also contemporary and dynamic insofar as the relation between this institution and the, its origins in the Swedish immigration and the Swedish nation. I should like now to introduce the uh, members of the head table. Uh, those of you who have been here for one or more sessions have undoubtedly identified them, <coughs> and uh, if you have had the privilege of listening to their lectures, they are more than names. You have also had a, an indication of what goes on in their minds. To the far right, Dr. Paul Ramsey of Princeton University, who <coughs> spoke to us this morning about the moral and religious implications of genetic control. <laughs> Mrs. Edward L. Tatum, who is <coughs> who 
was part of what uh, makes Dr. Tatum's work interesting. <laughs> Dr. Sheldon Reed of the University of Minnesota. I think it's not amiss to say that we are particularly pleased that at this first symposium, we've had a representative of the University of Minnesota. And I should also like to say that we have not chosen him because he represents the University of Minnesota. While we were not unaware of his reputation and his qualities, it was actually out of contacts along the eastern seaboard that uh, people said, well, you've got a top-notch geneticist right there at the University of Minnesota. And uh, we agree completely. Dr. Polycarp Kush, who served as the moderator for this symposium. <laughs> and who will be operating at his exceptional best as the moderator of the panel tonight. Dr. H. Bentley Glass of Johns Hopkins University, who <coughs> whose distinctions are too many to enumerate. Uh, Consul General Olaf Landinius, We are delighted that he could be with us tonight and represent not only the Consul General, uh, hmm. <laughs> Consulate General of this area, but also thereby his uh, homeland. Mrs. Philip Hench. <laughs> about whom you heard the testimony last night that all that Philip Hench is or hopes to be, he owes to his wife. And Dr. Philip Hench, who is <laughs> the honorary chairman of this symposium, member of its advisory committee. Um, I was going to say last night in introducing him, but then um, it got a little uh, restless here at the end. I was going to comment that um, I think Dr. Hench has adopted Sweden, Council General, and uh, those of us who um, from time to time share in the souvenirs that he brings back know that this has been decidedly to the advantage of Swedish trade. I was also going to comment that um, <coughs> among his uh, less well-known accomplishments, um, his uh, expertness in the field of Sherlock Holmes literature, and um, he does such things as writing for the news notes of the Metropolitan Opera news organ, and um, to say that uh, photography is a hobby of his is an understatement. <laughs> but um, he has his films developed in Paris, I'm told, and they've just discovered that this is the reason there's been that big drain on the uh, gold reserve in this country. <laughs> Mrs., uh, Mrs. Edgar Carlson, about whom I could not say too much, Dr. Edward Tatum, <laughs> of Rockefeller Institute, and um, whose contribution in the technical aspects, the biological aspects of our problem has been so very substantial. Mrs. William Shockley. <laughs> of Leland Stanford, uh, Dr. Kingsley Davis, <laughs> a 
of the University of California at Berkeley, Mrs. Albert Swanson, <laughs> and Dr. William Shockley, also of Leland Stanford, and Dr. Albert Swanson, Dean of the College. I should like now to call on Dean Swanson to introduce to this group the uh, members of our science departments. We would like thus also to recognize the very significant work that is being done in these departments, uh, not only during the Nobel Symposium, but also throughout the year. President Carlson, I will ask you to rise. Dr. Arthur Glass, the chairman of the Department of Biology. <laughs> Dr. Charles Hamram, Department of Biology. <laughs> Dr. Myron Anderson, Department of Biology. Robert Bellig, Department of Biology. <laughs> uh, Ward Tanner is missing tonight. He's in Puerto Rico with a group of students uh, uh, engaged in the uh, study of marine biology. From the Department of Chemistry, Dr. Arnie Langshan, Chairman of the Department. <laughs> Dr. Bernard Hugenboom. <laughs> Dr. Bruce Friedrich. <laughs> and James Johnson. <laughs> and from the Department of Geology, Professor Chester Johnson. From the Department of Mathematics, Mr. H. Moulton Anderson, Chairman, <laughs> and Milton Brostrom, <laughs> Richard Bell, Department of Mathematics, <laughs> from the Department of Physics, Dr. Milward Rodine, Chairman, Professor Nicholas Gursky, Department of Physics. Dr. Franklin Johnson, Department of Physics. May I ask the wives who are present from this group to Stand, please. I think I can identify them, but I wasn't real sure. <laughs> Here's Milton, Milton Anderson, Mrs. Bell, Mrs. Friedrich, and uh, Mrs. Rodine, and Mrs. Brostrom, and Mrs. Chester Johnson. Thank you. Now I think uh, we should proceed directly to the um, Alumni Hall.